Hi, I'm John, and I'm going to show you how to build this game from scratch in Unreal Engine in just about an hour. All right, I've opened up a new blank project here, and I'm just going to get started by deleting a couple of these uh, pieces here, the sphere reflection capture, the player start. I'm going to grab the floor here, press R and scale this up a bunch. And I'm going to go ahead and make my game uh, character here. So I'm going to right click, blueprint, pawn, and I'm going to call this my war pawn. And I'm just going to build this in the editor here. I'm not going to use any uh, 3D models or anything like that. I'm just going to say add a cube and uh, let's see here. I'm going to call this body, drag it over the default scene route to replace it. And I'm going to add uh, another cube here. I'll call this one head. Uh, I'm just going to drag it up here, change the scale to 0.5 in all the axes. Okay, and uh, I'm going to add a sphere. And I'm going to call that ears. And I'm going to scale that uh, a bit like this and a bit like this and uh, maybe a little bit like that and we'll move it uh, somewhere like this okay and uh, now I'm gonna add another cube here I'm gonna call this one arms and uh, scale it a little bit here Okay, and uh, now I'm going to uh, duplicate that. Call this left hand. And uh, I'll drag this over here, uh, rotate it, and uh, scale it down a bit in this dimension. And uh, now I'm going to uh, duplicate that. Control W, call this right hand. And I'll just drag this over to the other side here. And I'm basically done with the, the basic design of my uh, pawn here. So I'm going to compile, save, and what I'm going to do is uh, drag one of these out onto my, uh, into my world here. Uh, drag this up a little bit, press end. And OK, so what I need to do here is uh, I'm going to use one of these as the player controlled character. So I'm going to say, uh, find in the details here under possess, auto possess player, player zero. And we're going to need a camera viewpoint here. So I'm going to go back into the pawn here, select the body, add a spring arm. And uh, with the spring arm selected, I'll add a camera. And I'll just move this spring arm up a little bit, like this. And in the details here, I'm going to find uh, Use Pawn Control Rotation. So now I can manipulate this uh, camera with the Pawn Control Rotation. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of input uh, events here for the mouse. So I'm going to go to the Event Graph and right click here, type Mouse X. And uh, I'll right click here and type mouse Y. And I'm going to right click, type uh, add controller yaw input. And I'll connect this one up for mouse X. And I'm going to right click and type add controller pitch input. And I'm going to hook this for mouse Y, but I'm actually going to uh, invert the axis value. Uh, depending on your preference, you may want to invert this uh, or not. For me, it doesn't feel right if it's not inverted. So I'm going to multiply this uh, by minus 1. 
Okay, and so now I should be able to uh, pan around with the mouse. So let's take a look here. Yep, perfect. Okay, so I'm able to pan around and uh, the next thing I'm gonna add here is uh, some movement controls. I'm gonna uh, hook up W and S for forward and backward movement. So what I need to do here uh, is create an axis mapping and I'll go to edit, project settings, uh, input, make a new axis mapping, and I'm going to call this uh, forward axis. Uh, and for the inputs here, I'm going to add a second one, and we'll set these to W on the keyboard and S on the keyboard. And for uh, W, the scale will be 1, S, the scale will be minus 1. All right, so now on the event graph here in the pawn, I can right click and get that axis mapping I just made. I called that uh, forward axis. And I'm going to right click and say add movement input and connect that up and plug in the axis value to the scale value here. And for world direction, I'm gonna say right click, get control rotation and uh, I'm going to right click get forward vector and uh, I'm just going to split the pins here and I'm only plugging in the Z value I'm going to leave the roll and the pitch at zero and plug that in as the uh, world direction and uh, in order for this to work I have to add a component here. I have to add a floating pawn movement. Uh, and one more thing I have to do as well is on the event tick I have to right click and add a consume uh, consume movement input vector and we'll connect that up. Okay so now I should be able to use my W and S key to move uh, forward and backward and let's test it out. Okay, so that's working. And I'm basically moving forward in whatever direction the camera's facing. So if I face the camera this way, I'm moving this way. And uh, that's great. So what I wanna do now is um, I wanna have my uh, headpiece here. I want it to rotate in the direction that I'm looking. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is on the event tick here, um, I'm going to uh, just move these input controls and move these down here. Uh, while I have everything selected, I'll press C, type in input controls. And for the event tick here, uh, we're gonna end up doing a handful of things. So I'm gonna make a sequence here. And um, the first thing we're gonna do is just this. Uh, select this and press uh, C and say do movement. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is uh, rotate our head to face our control rotation. So I'm gonna grab the head, drag it in here, say set world rotation, and uh, set it to uh, the control rotation. So I'll right click, get control rotation. And I'll plug that in there and uh, hook up the execution pin select all these nodes, press C and type in uh, rotate head uh, to control rotation. Okay, um, so let's try that out. All right, so now we can see our head is uh, permanently facing whichever way our camera is facing, whichever way I'm looking. And so that's great. Now I wanna make the actual actor, the whole rest of the body here, also rotate towards our forward direction. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna add a pin here and we'll come off here and say set actor rotation. Um, but I don't wanna snap it uh, instantly like we're doing with the head. Uh, I want it to move smoothly. So I'm going to use an R interp to node 
This is a smooth interpolation for a rotator. And uh, I'm going to split the pin here and here, and I'm only going to feed in the Z value again. So I don't want to affect any roll or pitch, just our yaw rotation. And uh, for this node here, I need to plug in the current and the target. So I'm going to say right click and say get actor rotation. And that's our current rotation. Uh, and then I'm going to say get control rotation. And that's the target we're trying to reach. And for delta time here, I'm going to right click and say world delta, uh, get world delta seconds. And I could just drag this delta seconds over here, but I'm just going to make this extra node here to keep it a bit cleaner. Um, and then in terp speed, I'm going to set it to something like five. Okay, so that's going to take care of our, uh, the rest of our actor uh, turning to face the, uh, the forward direction. So I'll just select all of these, press C and say uh, rotate actor towards uh, forwards, forward vector. All right, and uh, let's check it out. Okay, so yeah, right away when I uh, turn to face a new direction, the body uh, rotates to follow smoothly. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this uh, movement setup for now. And what I want to do next is introduce a function to fire a projectile. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a projectile actor first. So I'm going to right click here in the content browser, new blueprint, make an actor, uh, and I'll call this my war projectile. And I'll open that up and for the projectile here, I'm just going to make something uh, fairly simple. I'm going to add, um, let's say, uh, a sphere. And I'll scale that down to uh, maybe 0.2 in all the dimensions. And um, I'm going to also add a, a cone. And I'll scale that as well, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, uh, maybe 0.3 actually. Let's leave it at 0.3. And uh, I'm just going to rotate that and uh, Let's see here, we want this to face uh, forward on the x-axis, so that should work like this. Okay, I'm going to grab the sphere and uh, just scale it a bit like this. I'm going to turn off um, snapping so I can uh, scale this just a bit more with a bit more resolution here. Okay, and so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to make anything too fancy here. Uh, I'm just going to compile, and uh, actually, what I need to do here is add one more component the projectile movement component. And I'm going to set up um, a speed for this, let's say uh, 2500 for initial and max speed. Rotation follows velocity. Uh, well, we're just going to fire these straight. They're not really going to be rotating, so we don't need to check that. Um, projectile gravity. I don't really want these to have gravity, so uh, let's turn that off. Turn that to zero. And um, let's see here. I'm going to set a lifespan for this actor so that it doesn't just uh, continue to fly off uh, forever and, and ever. Um, let's say five seconds. OK, compile, save. I'm going to close that for now. I'm going to go back to my pawn. And uh, in the viewport here, I'm going to uh, go to the uh, select the body here. I'm just going to add a uh, sphere collision. I just want to make something um, like a dummy uh, marker for where my projectile can spawn from. So I'll make that, and I'm just going to call this uh, 
projectile spawn point uh, one. And I'll drag that forward here. And I'm going to put this uh, just in front of the left arm here. All right. And uh, I'm going to make sure that my overlap um, and collision is set to off for this so that it's not going to interfere with uh, when I spawn my projectile. So I'm going to go to collision. Um, Turn off generate overlap and I'll just set collision to no collision. And now I'm going to go back to the event graph and I'm going to create the function to spawn the projectile. And so I'm going to right click here in a new spot and I'll just type in uh, left mouse button. And I'll drag off of here and say uh, spawn actor from class. And the class is going to be my war projectile. And uh, the transform, I'm just going to plug in the transform of this projectile spawn point. So I'll drag that on, uh, get world transform, and we'll plug that in. And for collision handling, uh, we'll just always spawn, ignore collisions, and that's pretty much it. So when I press the left mouse button, it's going to spawn that projectile in the location of this projectile spawn point. And I've already set the uh, projectile movement component to uh, uh, an initial speed of 2500. So it should just take off. So let's uh, test it out and see if that works. Yeah, perfect. So I've got my projectile firing and uh, what I'm going to do here now is just make a small adjustment so that this is going to fire alternating between uh, my two arms here. So all I have to do here is go to my uh, pawn and the viewport, grab my projectile spawn point 1, control W, and that'll make uh, projectile spawn point 2. I'm going to drag that over to the other arm here. And uh, I just want to actually tilt these a little bit. I want to uh, have my projectiles uh, angled slightly inward so that they're going to uh, maybe intersect some point down the line here. And so for the rotation for this, I'm going to, uh, let's see here, I want to rotate it <clears throat> this way, so that's in the negative. And so I'll rotate this by a negative, maybe, uh, maybe just two degrees. And so the other one over here will be positive, positive two degrees. And, uh, oops. Okay, uh, I've accidentally set the rotation here in the x value instead of on the z, minus two, and plus two. All right. And now to alternate uh, where we're spawning, I'm going to go back to the event graph here. And on the left mouse button, um, I'll just drag, make some room here, drag off of here and type flip flop. And uh, I'm just going to grab these three nodes here and press Control W to duplicate them. And plug the B pin in down here. And now uh, I'll just delete this uh, projectile spawn point two. Uh, one, I should say, drag in projectile spawn point two. And now this function is going to flip flop between uh, spawning at this location or this location. All right, let's check it out. Perfect. So we're alternating between uh, the different side, the different arms, and we're also uh, angling the projectiles slightly so that they uh, intersect at some some point out in the distance there. All right, so great. Now what we need to do next is introduce uh, some AI players to uh, the game. And so what I'm going to do here is, uh, first of all, open up my pawn again. And in the details here, I'm going to make sure under uh, Auto Possess AI, I need to select this to, uh, or change this to, uh, 
spawned. And so I'm going to spawn a bunch of these pawns in the world, and I want them to possess an AI automatically when they get spawned. So that setting is going to uh, affect that. And um, what I'm going to do now is say, uh, let's go to the level blueprint. And I'll open that up. And from the begin play here, I'm going to drag and say, uh, set timer by event. And uh, I'll set the time here to, let's say, one second. I'll spawn a new pawn into the world every one second. And we'll set that to looping so it happens over and over again. And I'll right click, make a custom event called uh, spawn uh, underscore NPC. And I'll connect up the uh, event here to the timer. And what we'll do is we'll right click and say spawn actor from class. Connect that up. And uh, we're going to spawn a war pawn, my war pawn. And for the location here, I'll split the transform. And I'm going to actually split the location as well. And I'm just going to uh, plug in some random values here. So I'll say, uh, right click, say random float in range, and uh, plug that in for the x. And we'll say anywhere from minus 5,000 to plus 5,000 in the x value. Uh, Control W to duplicate that node and plug that into y. So same thing for the y. We'll get minus 5,000 to plus 5,000. And the z value is going to be uh, the same every time, just on, the, on this uh, floor plane we've got here. So I'll just check out, uh, let's see, let's check the z value of our pawn here. It's uh, 70. Okay, So I can basically set this to a uh, fixed amount of 70. And that's pretty much it. This should spawn a pawn every one second at uh, some random location between minus and plus 5,000 in the x and y. So let's check it out and see if that's working. And it's not. So uh, let's see. I think I need to change collision handling um, to, let's say, always spawn, ignore collisions, and that'll probably work. There we go, someone over here. All right, so this is working. We're spawning our pawns in, one every second. Now we just need to give these pawns uh, some AI, something to do. Let's say uh, acquire a target and fire some shots. And so that's what we'll do next. OK, I'm going to go back into the pawn blueprint, and I'm going to go to the uh, begin play event. And uh, I'm going to right click here and say, um, let's say, is player controlled? And uh, this is going to return true or false. So I'll get a branch here. And uh, we want the AI to start happening if it's not player controlled. So uh, from the false here, I'm going to say set to timer by event. And uh, I'm going to make our AI actions happen every about, uh, let's say, three seconds. And that'll be looping. And I'll make the event here, custom event. Uh, and I'll call that uh, AI, oops, uh, AI underscore tasks. Uh, and I'll connect that up here to the timer. And uh, for the AI tasks, I'm going to do uh, a couple of things at least here. So I'm going to drag off here and do a sequence. And the first thing I want to do is uh, acquire a target. So I'm going to use. Um, Let's see, I could use uh, get all actors of class and just get all of the uh, pawns in the game. 
or I can also use um, sphere overlap actor. Okay, and for this one, uh, I'm going to use uh, the position of the actor as the uh, position for the sphere. So I'll say get actor location and plug that to sphere position. And uh, for the radius, we'll say, let's make it uh, maybe 2,500 uh, radius and object types here. I'm gonna make array and uh, looking for uh, basically world dynamic objects. And I can filter the uh, actor class here as well. So I might as well, we're looking for uh, my war pawn actors. And uh, for actors to ignore, I don't wanna find uh, myself. So I'll just make an array here and uh, right click, type in self here and get a reference to self, plug that into the array. Okay, and now I'm gonna get this out actors is gonna be all of the overlapped actors. So I'm gonna wanna grab that and type random and uh, we'll just find one of the random um, actors that we've uh, overlapped in the sphere here and uh, we'll make that our target. And to make that my target, I'm gonna make a variable here. And I'll call this uh, target war pawn. And I'll set the variable type here to uh, my war pawn. And uh, I can now drag this in here to the graph, uh, hit set, and uh, we'll plug in this result here. This random result uh, will become our target, okay out actors, I'm gonna to have to cast this uh, to target war pawn. Uh, sorry, to uh, my war pawn. And plug that into our target here, okay. So basically, uh, here, I'll just grab all these nodes here and I'll hit C and we'll say acquire a random target nearby, uh, or somewhat nearby anyway. Um, and after we've got a target, uh, what I wanna do is uh, move towards that target. So I'm gonna say, uh, from the sequence here, the next thing we'll do is say AI move to, and uh, the pawn is um, self, so this is the pawn blueprint, so I can say get a reference to self, plug that in there, and I can plug in either a destination vector or a target actor, so I'm gonna plug in the target actor, uh, the target war pawn here, drag that in, and acceptance radius. Uh, so let's get uh, within, let's say, 1,000 units of our target. And uh, on succeeding, we want to uh, fire a projectile. And so uh, I set up that projectile to work from the uh, left mouse button here. And uh, of course, the AI doesn't have a left mouse button, so they're gonna need a way to fire off this same event. So I'll just right click here make a new custom event and I'll call this AI uh, fire projectile and I'll just plug this in to the flip-flop and uh, now I'll just grab all these nodes here press uh, C and type in uh, fire projectile so we'll keep that all organized there and uh, so now the AI can use this event node to uh, fire its own projectile, and that's what we'll do here. Uh, so the AI move to node on success, will say uh, AI underscore fire projectile. Okay. And uh, so one more thing I'm gonna need to do here for the AI to be able to move around in our world, we need to introduce uh, nav mesh. And so I'll do that. I'll just go to uh, create volumes, a nav mesh bounds volume. 
and uh, I'll set the location to zero, 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 just right in the middle of the world. And I'll set the scale to something really big to just cover everything here, say uh, maybe 10,000, or uh, I don't need to set the scale to 10,000 actually. I'll set the, uh, the brush settings here. We'll set the X value to 10,000 and the Y value 10,000. And uh, we'll set the Z value to maybe uh, 500. That'll be fine. Okay, and uh, so I can see here actually I haven't quite made it to the corners of my uh, map, but that's okay. Um, for now, we'll go with that. And uh, I can visualize this navigation area here by pressing P. And so everything's green uh, except for around the actor. And that's going to be a problem because we're trying to target another actor. And if the navigation mesh is non-existent under the uh, target, um, it's not going to move there. So I'm just going to go ahead and open my actor here again, my uh, war pawn. And uh, I think I just need to remove, uh, select body here, say uh, affect navigation. I'm going to just uncheck here, can ever affect navigation uh, for the body and the head. Uh, well, all of these parts. And I think these uh, projectile spawn points as well. Yep. Okay, and after unchecking all of those, uh, perfect. Our navigation is not being affected by the pawn, and so they should be able to uh, target each other, navigate uh, towards each other, and uh, ultimately fire uh, projectiles at each other. Okay, so I'll just press P here again to turn that off, and uh, just check out my uh, AI code here and clean things up. Say move toward target and fire. And uh, let's go ahead and see if uh, this is working. Okay, so we've got, uh, yep, we've got some action happening here. These uh, pawns, uh, I think it was targeting me there. These pawns are uh, finding a random target and moving towards it and firing. Okay. So uh, we're almost done here. What we need to do is uh, just introduce uh, some collision detection and maybe some health and uh, so we can damage uh, these pawns or they can damage each other. And so, okay. First thing I'm going to do here though is make some uh, materials. And so everything looks pretty boring here. So I'm just going to right click, make a new material and call this um, war pawn underscore mat and I'll open that up here and uh, I'm gonna make this just a parameter here I'm gonna hold three on the keyboard and click uh, plug that into base color right click and say convert to parameter and we'll say uh, this is gonna be the pawn color uh, okay and I'll save and uh, close that and now in my pawn blueprint on begin play here what I'm going to do is uh, make this into a sequence, so we can do a few things here. And I'll move this AI stuff into the second pin, uh, maybe make a comment around here. We'll say um, check if NPC and start AI tasks timer. Okay. Uh, but before that, what we're going to do here is set up some materials. And so what I'm going to do here is just right click and say uh, create dynamic material instance. And the uh, parent is going to be the warpawn underscore mat. And uh, I'm just going to connect the execution node here. And from the return value, I'm going to say uh, set vector parameter value. Uh, and the parameter name is pawn color that we just made in the material there. And the value I'm going to pass, I want to 
pass in a random color. So I'm going to drag back from that and say uh, make linear color. And uh, for the values here, I'm going to uh, just right click here and I'm going to say uh, random uh, vector. And I can get this random unit vector. This is just an easy way to get uh, a few random floats in one node here. I'll split the pin, uh, plug this into red, Y into green, and Z into blue. And uh, I'm going to set alpha to 1, fully opaque. And now I'm going to, um, let's see here, I want to grab the uh, body from my component list here, and I'll say set material. And I'm just going to plug in this material that we made here, the return value of this dynamic material. And uh, I'm also going to grab the ears and uh, make a set material node for that as well. And uh, uh, same thing here, I'm going to drag this return value over to here. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to grab all these nodes here press C and type in uh, set a random material color. And uh, we'll just compile and play and see if that worked. Looks good. So I've got a random color here and so does everybody else. So that helps a little bit here. And um, one more thing I want to do is uh, I'm just going to right click, make another material and call this uh, projectile underscore Oops. underscore M-A-T. Um, and I'll just make this a basic, uh, let's see, um, maybe a red color or something like that. And uh, maybe I'll also make the roughness here zero so it'll be shiny. And uh, I'll apply that to my projectile and I'm just going to apply that actually to the cone. Okay, and uh, let's give it a whirl here. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's not bad here. At least our projectiles have a little bit of color to them as well. And okay, so the next thing I'm going to work on here is uh, the collision for these projectiles so we can actually uh, connect with these uh, pawns. And what I'm going to do is in the pawn blueprint here, I'm going to find uh, the begin overlap node here. And I'll just drag this over to make some room. And uh, we need to drag from that. I'm going to use a sequence once again. And the first thing that we're going to do here is um, check if this is a projectile that has overlapped. So I actually don't need the sequence yet. We're going to do a sequence of things if it is a projectile. So I'll check that first. And uh, we'll say other actor here, get class. And uh, return value here, I'll drag off and say equals equals. And check if it's a my war projectile. And that'll be true or false. So I'll type in branch here. And uh, we want to do our sequence of events if it is true that this is equal to a projectile that has overlapped us here. Okay, so I'll just drag this over a bit more here. And the first thing I want to do is um, I want to create uh, an explosion, uh, a particle effect, and a sound. And uh, so unfortunately, I didn't include starter content when I uh, made this project. So what I'm going to do here is just go um, in my content browser here. I can go to Add, Add Feature or Content Pack, Content Packs, Starter Content. Add that to the project. 
And this is just so I can grab uh, some built-in uh, or some uh, uh, an explosion uh, particle effect that comes with the starter content. So I'm going to go back to my pawn here, and I'm going to right-click and say uh, spawn emitter at location. And that'll be the first step here. We're going to spawn an emitter, and it's going to be the explosion, P underscore explosion here. And the location is uh, just going to be at the, uh, the location of this other actor, the overlap. So um, just grab that and say get actor location. Plug it in here. And uh, we also want to play a sound. So I'm going to right click here and say um, play sound at location. And the sound, I'm going to find the explosion cue. And for location, I'll just plug in the same uh, actor location here. And uh, I think that'll be fine. So. Um, also, though, what we're going to do is, after exploding and playing the sound, um, we're going to go ahead and destroy that projectile actor. So I'll just uh, drag here from other actor, and I'll type in destroy actor, and uh, we'll put that there. Okay, so I'll grab uh, all of these nodes here. And I'll type C and type in um, make explosion and destroy actor. Okay. Uh, and so the next thing I want to do here, let's move these over, um, is we're going to uh, make a health variable that we can adjust here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a new variable called health and set the variable type to uh, float. And I'll compile and set the default value to 100. And uh, what we'll do here is uh, when a projectile has overlapped, has connected with us, uh, or whatever pawn, uh, it's going to take the health here and we'll set it. And we're going to set it to whatever the health is already minus a little bit. So I'll grab health again and get it. And uh, from there, I'm going to say subtract. And we'll subtract maybe 10. And we'll set our health to uh, that new value. OK, so that's going to adjust our health, but um, we don't actually have uh, any way to indicate our health on the screen. So the next thing I'm going to do here is go to my content browser and I'm going to right click and go to user interface and make a widget blueprint. And I'm going to call that health bar uh, underscore widget. And uh, I'll open that up here and I'm going to set the size to uh, custom and I'm going to set the width to 300 and the height to 20 and then I'm going to uh, search in the palette here for a progress bar drag that in here to the canvas panel and uh, I'll grab that here and change the name to health uh, progress bar uh, just so I know that's a progress bar because the way we're going to set the the value of that is uh, by this percent value. Um, so if I set this, say, to 1 to start with, it'll be full to start with. And I just need to change the size here to 300 by 20 as well. And the fill color from blue to uh, green. OK, and I don't want these uh, this fancy uh, bars uh, fill effect going on here. So I just go to style and I can go uh, enable fill animation, no, uh, and the fill image here. I'm just going to put tiling to no tile. All right. So that's basically it for the uh, health bar widget. I'm going to close that. And I want to add this uh, to my 
uh, pawn as a component. So I'm going to add a widget and I'll call that the health bar uh, under, well I'll call this, let's see here, I'll just call this the overhead health bar. Oops. Okay. And uh, so the overhead health bar, uh, we're going to set this here to the widget class is going to be our health bar widget and the draw size will be 300 by 20. And uh, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to go to the viewport, take a look here and we'll adjust the position of this to over top. That seems good. And uh, I'll set this up after to be double sided so I can see this from the back. But for now, I'm going to go ahead with that. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my pawn blueprint here. And uh, after adjusting the health, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to drag in this overhead health bar. Drag from that and say get user widget object. And uh, now I can drag from that and say cast to health bar widget. And I'll plug that in there. Um, and I'm just going to move this around here. I've run out of room here, so I'm going to drag everything, uh, maybe just all the way up to the top here. Okay, and so uh, I've got the health bar widget, and I want to get the uh, health progress bar. And I'm going to drag from that and set the percent. And the percentage is going to be our health uh, divided by 100 because uh, this percentage, even though it says percent, it's looking for a value between 0 and 1. Uh, so we'll divide our health by 100. That'll give us a value between 0 and 1. Okay, um, so let's give this a try here and see if this is working. We should have our explosions happening and uh, some health being registered. Okay, so we're not getting any explosions and uh, probably didn't set up the overlap event. Uh, let's see, my war projectile, we'll open that up. I'm going to select the cone here and find under uh, collision here, generate overlap events. Collision presets will say um, overlap all dynamic. And uh, let's see, that might be enough to get this working here. Yep. So it seems to be working here. Uh, I've noticed one thing here with the progress bar for the health. Uh, it has a black background and rather have a, a transparent background. So I'm just going to open that back up here. Uh, select the progress bar, go to background image, I believe. Um, and I'll set the tint here and put the alpha to zero. And I'm um, going to make one more quick change here. Uh, after we set the percentage for the health bar, I'm actually also going to set the fill color. And we'll adjust this fill color based on how much health uh, is left. And so uh, for the color in color here, I'm going to drag back and say uh, make a linear color. Um, and for red, I'll put in 0.5. And uh, for green, I'm going to drag in um, the, let's see, I'm going to use, I think, this same value, health divided by 100. So a, a, a number between 0 and 1. And uh, for alpha, we'll put in 1. And let's see if that works out. Okay, yeah, so now the, uh, the health is adjusted, the color gets uh, yellow, then orange, then darker orange as the health is depleted. 
Okay, and so now last thing we need to do is make it so that these pawns can actually uh, die when they run out of health. So I'll go back to uh, my pawn uh, blueprint here. And first thing I'll do is just grab all the health uh, nodes here, type uh, C and type in um, adjust uh, health, good enough. And now we'll check the uh, if the health is uh, less than or equal to zero. So I'll just make another uh, node here and say uh, less than or equal to and uh, make a branch from that. And I'll add a pin here to my sequence and uh, plug that in here. And um, if the health is below zero, what we'll do is uh, make a big explosion again. So we'll go spawn emitter at location. And uh, we'll make the explosion again. Um, and this time I'm going to put the scale to three. So it'll be quite a bit bigger. And the location, we're going to need uh, right click get actor location. Plug that in. And uh, also the noise. So we'll say right click and play sound at location and I'll set that to the explosion as well and maybe uh, turn the volume up here turn the volume multiplier to 2 we'll plug in the actor location again for the location for the sound and uh, then we will destroy the actor destroy uh, our self. So this is the, the pawn blueprint. So if we destroy actor and target is self, that's going to destroy our self. And I'll just grab all these nodes here, type C and say um, uh, check if pawn is dead. All right. So basically that's the setup for uh, the begin overlap node here. We check if it's a projectile and uh, so here I'll just say uh, grab these nodes here, press C, check if overlap is a uh, projectile. And uh, if it is, then we do this sequence of events. We make the explosion and destroy the uh, projectile actor. I'll just adjust this to be more clear. Destroy projectile actor. Uh, adjust the health and check if pawn is dead. Okay. Uh, so let's try it out. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I've noticed that the uh, audio for the explosion, you can't really hear it if they're far away. And so I'm just going to go ahead and make that uh, adjustment here. I'm going to find the uh, starter content audio explosion cue. <coughs> And I'll just change the fall off distance here from 1800 to like 5000. And uh, I also want to make the, uh, the health bar widget uh, two sided material. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to uh, my content browser here. And uh, I can go to settings and say show engine content and in engine content I'm going to find uh, widget um, okay so I want this uh, widget pass through material and uh, I'm going to uh, duplicate this I'll just press control W and call this uh, my widget pass through underscore mat and I'll drag that into the content folder, move it there. And I also need uh, one of these instances here, this um, widget 3D pass through um, masked. So I'm going to grab this 
and uh, also control W. And I'll call this my uh, widget, um, well, let's say uh, material instance underscore MI. I'm going to move that to my content folder. And um, I'm going to turn off show engine content. And now I should be able to uh, just adjust these uh, materials here in the way I need. And what I have to do is open up the pass through material, um, disconnect this from the uh, emissive color from the A node of the multiply. I'm going to put in the slate UI RGB value. Save and apply. And uh, what I want to do next is open up my material instance here. And I'm going to set the parent to be uh, the uh, material I just made there, my widget pass through material. And uh, save, and I'll close that. And now, if I grab my overhead health bar here, component, um, and I'm going to set the material here to the material instance that I just made, my widget material instance. And if I did everything right there, this should work. I should be able to see the backside of my uh, health bars. So let's give it a whirl here. Perfect. So now I can see both sides of these health bars on the players, on the pawns. Okay, so that's pretty much it, and I'm going to end the video here. Um, and of course, feel free to tinker around with this and make some changes. Obviously, right now, this AI functionality is not very threatening at all. Uh, they're just running around gra uh, grabbing random targets, so uh, there's a lot of room for improvement here for sure. Um, and of course, you can uh, you could take this in sort of in any uh, number of directions that you might want to go with it. Uh, okay, well, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you, uh, that you enjoyed watching. Hope you maybe learned something watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.